Welcome back everybody. In this video, we'll go over FLM configuration and how to receive and send traffic. According to W1HKJ.com, FLM will transmit one or more files which are broken into blocks and each block has a checksum. Receiving stations save blocks that pass that checksum. If for some reason a receiving station doesn't copy a block completely, the station can request a fill of only that block so the whole file doesn't need to be retransmitted. Although transmitting files using FLAMP is a bit slower than FL Message, it is more useful if you need to make sure details of a file need to be relayed with 100% accuracy. An example of this would be relaying specific quantities of certain items needed after a hurricane or other large-scale emergency. We've already installed FLAMP in a previous video, so we'll jump right into the configuration. Open up the program and click on the configure tab at the top of the window and begin with filling out your call sign. Below that in the info line I place QTH Florida. This is plugged into the header of the files transmitted by your station when you send it. You can check these boxes as you see fit, but these are the ones I've selected. Auto sync FL amp to FL digi mode selector, that box allows you to transmit in supported modes that you may already be in in the FL digi software. I also checked the box saying enable transmit and receive interval. This allows your rig to take a break from transmitting at periodic times while sending those files. This is good for giving a momentary pause to allow for emergency traffic or to give your system a break to prevent overheating due to that full cycle digital modes. Those modes can be pretty hard on your system. I've got it set to about three minutes. Make sure your rig's timeout timer is set to a bit longer than this so that they don't unkey, so that your rig doesn't unkey before your software stops transmitting. Now we'll move on to receiving files. As you decode signals in FL Digi, you will notice that the blocks are automatically recorded in FL AMP under the receive tab on the top left of that window. If you are in the correct mode and have a good copy of the transmitting station at the beginning of that file send, you should see the file date, time, description, and other fields populate after the file header is copied. You should also see the file populate uh, in the receive queue at the bottom with a percentage copied as the file is received. If this doesn't happen and you see a continuous 0% in the queue as the file is being copied by FL Digi, don't worry, we can come back to that later. As blocks are copied, the numbers in the block field will turn blue with the missing blocks remaining as text of the block that was missed. At the end of the file, it's customary for the sending station, typically like net control, to ask for fill requests. It's at this time that you may hit the report button over on the side to send a list of the missing blocks back to the sending station for retransmission. If by any chance you've missed the header, you may see still see that you have 0%. This is because the data in that header is needed to determine how many blocks are in the file. You can type in the block numbers manually with the block numbers being separated by commas or spaces. It doesn't really matter. The header block is block zero, so ask for that first if you're missing it. After receiving block zero, FLM then can go back and pull the data and the blocks from previous transmissions to fill in the rest of that file. I've had multiple instances, it happens actually fairly commonly, where I missed block zero and went from 0% to 100% just by requesting and receiving that full complete header. And once you receive a full copy on the file, you must click on that save button on the right side of the window to, you know, get this, stick with me here, save the file, right? Crazy. Anyway, pick the folder you wish to save the file in so that you can view it at a later time. It would be a good time while saving to right click on the folder that you're saving it in and click pin to quick access so you can find it easier later. Typically files that are received in FL AMP can be viewed in FL message and if you go to FL message select the file open up there at the top left and then locate the folder you saved that received file under. And uh, as a little hint, if you use the quick access advice from a minute ago, you can make this job way easier. Now transmitting a file is much easier. Simply click on the transmit tab and click the add button above the transmit queue. Select the file you wish to send and then hit transmit to send only that 
selected file. Now it's possible you can add multiple files to the queue if you have them to send and then send them consecutively by slamming that transmit all button. You may tweak the transmit settings a bit according to your preferences and needs by adjusting the size of the blocks being sent and repeating the header or the body, but I find that default settings work just fine. Now, it's important to remember to make sure your rig timeout timer and FL amp match or, um, or it's disabled or your rig's timeout timer is disabled when transmitting. Also keep in mind digital modes can be hard on the rig and antenna system, so be aware of the limitations of your setup and use the appropriate power as not to damage your equipment, because that's always a bad day. Once again, guys, I want to thank you for sticking by, and feel free to drop any questions in the comment section below, and I will look forward to seeing you on the air.